students welcome to the us class in last chapter under the chapter of air we studied about what are what is meant by air what are the components of the air what is the uses of the air isn't it and what is meant by air pollution what are the reasons the air will be get polluted and what are the prevention steps which we are going to take to control the air pollution isn't it so in today's session we are going to discuss under one chapter the most important chapter that is nothing but the water so in today's session under the chapter of water we are going to discuss what is meant by water what are the uses of the water and what are the sources of the water and what is meant by the water pollution how we are going to prevent the water pollution and what are the effects of the water pollution that will be discussed in today's session so water it is it is called it as an life liquid why we are going to call it as an life liquid because on the earth the life exist or the living organism exist because only of the water the water it is a more essential part that's that's being a more important role in a living beings life why because where there is a water there is a life the small component that is which we are going to call it as a microorganisms the living things are started with the microorganisms that microorganisms arises with the water here so where there is a water there is a life so that that's why we are going to call it as water is a life liquid on the earth surface about 71% of the earth will be covered with the water so when we are going to see the earth from the other planet it looks like bluish in color why because about 71% of the earth surface covered with the water here therefore our earth will be indicated by the blue color and also our earth will call it as a blue planet why it is called it as a blue pa planet because earth has 71% of the water see and remaining will be land is present so in the 71% of the water it is a not a usable water as you know already about in the 71% of water about 90% of the above water 90 to 98% of the water will be present in oceans only so that water which is present in the ocean it is a very salty water it is not a usable water but if you have to remember the usable water it is only about 3% is present in the earth surface that is the that 3% it includes the rivers ponds wells and also bore wells these are the all the percentage of the water will be present only 3% that is usable water that is the water which we are going to drink today every day and the water which we are going to use to bath that is nothing but only about 3% of water but remaining it is not usable because due to its saltiness it is a more salty water so one question arises in your mind where we are going to get the water what are the sources of the water but you have to remember the main source of the water it is nothing but the rain but we are going to get the water from the some of the sources what are the, that sources first here first source it is nothing but the rivers we are going to get the water to drink to bath to wash that is the water it is comes from the rivers how the rivers get the water where the rivers get the water rivers are going to get the water from the rains and also some of the rivers are going to get the water from the ice caps the ice caps which are present in the mountains that will be melted due to the sunlight so in the our in india jammu kashmir region has himalayas himalaya mountains that himalaya mountains has the ice caps that ice caps will will be melted and that will converted into a water that water will be that water will be flowed through the rivers so some of the rivers are going to be get the water from the rain and some of the rivers are going to be get the water from the ice cap so river it is a first source of water which we are going to get the all need of the water will provided more mainly on the and with the help of the rivers here so in the in one year we are going to get the 
water from the some of the rivers which flows through the rainfall but at sometimes at the summer session there is a no rainfall but in that way also how we are going to get the water but in that conditions due to the summer session the sun rises the the rays of the suns are very hot due to that the ice caps will be melted and that water will be flows through the rivers from that rivers we are going to get the water so river, rivers get the water one from the rainfall and another one from the ice caps or ice mountains and another one water source i am going to discuss here that is nothing but the springs see here when the rainfall occurs our earth surface has a sum of the spaces and earth also absorbs the rain water and that all the rain water absorbs the rain water and the water which goes through the spaces which is present in the earth that will be get collected at the earth crust that going to be get collected under the earth crust see here if it is a earth so some of the spaces are present some of the spaces are present due to the earthquake the some of the spaces are present in the earth imagine that this is the earth so when rainfall occurs some of the water will be collected under the earth crust and that water will flows and get collected in between the rocks that water will be get collected that water will be get collected in between the rocks so this water the collected water from the rain or the collected water from the spaces which is present in the earth surface that water will be comes out through the holes the spaces which are present why the water will comes from that holes because under the earth surface there is a high pressure due to that high pressure the collected rain water the collected absorbed water that will be comes with a full of force and this water it is the source which the water will comes that is called it as a springs you have to remember what what are springs springs here the water which is collected at the earth crust will comes out through the space which is present in the earth with a high pressure that water source it is called it as a springs so under one source which we are going to get the water it is nothing but springs here and third one the third source that is nothing but the wells so the wells are the ancient sources our ancestors are going to use or utilize or make a number of wells in our india so we are going to get we are going to get the water for drinking and also for bathing or other uses we are going to get the water from the wells today is we are going to get the water from the bore wells what is the difference between wells and a bore wells here i will discuss next but wells so this is the another one source which we are going to get the water what happen here the earth will be dug up to the water level the earth will be dug up to the water level we in which level we are going to get the water so by digging the earth we get the water and that space that is called it as a well here there are three types of the wells are present one is dug wells under one is drill wells under one is dry one wells the dug well it is an ancient well which we are going to see in our villages the number of wells are present but nowadays there is no water is present in the dug wells because the water level will be very down due to the high usage of the high amount of the and ground level water the water level decreases therefore in the wells we are not going to see any water nowadays but we are get the water from the drilled wells this drilled wells are nothing but bore wells we are going to drill the we are going to drill a hole into the earth until we get the water so that is under one type of the well that is called it as a drill well so it what is meant by the dry one wells here see here it is also type of the drilled well it is also type of the bore well but in the case of the drilled well the size of the pipe is very large the size of the pipe is very large but in the dry one wells a small pipe here they are using very small pipe 
they are using very small pipe to drill in the earth surface to get the water so there are three types of the wells are present drug dug wells drill wells and a dry one wells from these three types of the wells we are going to get the water to drink to bath or to utilize to wash any our utensils so see it is another one source of the water here next i am considering another one source of the water that is nothing but the ponds what are ponds ponds are the artificial man made low level portion of the land these are artificial man made the ponds are made by the man for to store the water in a small in a small quantity so what are ponds ponds are artificial man made low level portion of the land to store water is called the ponds if you have to see here the ponds are always made at the uh, low level portion of the earth low level portion of the earth means at the bottom of the hills at the bottom of the hills the ponds will be made why because large amount of the water will be comes will be flows from the hills towards the ponds in at that time when the rainfall comes the water will flows from the mountains will be collected at the ponds therefore the ponds are always made at the low level lands low level portion of the land so once again i am repeating here ponds are the artificial man made low level portion of the lands to store water but the water the, the quantity of the water which is stored in the pond is it is very less so why because why they are going to store the little quantity of the water it is used for only to drink and to bath only but it is not used for the irrigation purpose therefore the ponds has only less amount of the water here the ponds are made by our ancestors to to save the water or uh, to store the water for the drinking purposes and also ponds are useful for to make fisheries to make a fishery the ponds are also helpful here so another one source of the water is here reservoirs what are reservoirs the dams constructed across the river to store water throughout the year as i discussed here the rivers the one of the most important source of the water that is the river the river the river always ends with the oceans the river water always flows flows and again at the final point they are going to be connected with the oceans so the large amount of the water will be wasted when they are going to get connected with the oceans to store the large amount of the water they are going to construct the dams if you are considering this is the river it is going to be attached with the ocean so what are reservoirs here the dams are constructed across the rivers they are going to construct a dam here they are going to construct a dam across the river and a large amount of large amount of water will be stored and these dams are called it as a reservoirs what are reservoirs dams constructed across the river to store water throughout the year to store water throughout the year what is the difference between the ponds and the reservoir here it is it is also man made it is not a natural it is also man made artificial man made and that is also artificial man made but the difference is here the ponds store only small quantity of water but the reservoirs store large amount of the water and the water will be stored in a big area see here the ponds are always made at the low level portion of the land isn't it but the reservoirs always made across the rivers the dams are always made across the rivers because large amount of the water will becomes in the rivers but there is no large amount of the water will becomes in the ponds isn't it so it is under one difference between the ponds and the reservoir here so one is it here it is large amount of the water will be stored and ponds here only small small quantity of the water will be stored and 
the dams are always constructed across the rivers and but the ponds are always constructed at the low level portion of the land isn't it so these are also very important part of the human life why because the reservoirs provides the water for the lands which there is a no water you have to remember here so dams are why they are dams are constructed because they are going to store the water throughout the year the rain only comes at the seasons in the rainy seasons we are going to get the rain but in other seasons the rain is not present and we doesn't get the water but how we are going to get the water here the we are going to get the water from the water reservoirs from by the dams why because in the reservoirs the large quantity of the water will be stored isn't it so therefore it is very helpful for the human beings and also living organisms and another one use of the reservoirs here from the reservoir we get we get required amount of the water for the cultivation or for the irrigation process for to grow the plants for to grow grow the yields we are going to use the water that is nothing but the irrigation process for the irrigation process we get the water from the reservoirs but we doesn't get the water from the ponds to irrigation why because the amount of the water present in the ponds it is very small therefore the but water which is present in the reservoir it is a very big here so we can use that water for the irrigation process and another one use of the reservoir here by using the reservoir so reservoir it is nothing but the dam constructed across the river so when they are going to release the water for example if the dam will be fulfilled if the dam will be fulfilled what they are going to do they they are going to do they are going to release some amount of the water so at that time the pressure of the water is very high the pressure of the water is very high using that pressure they are going to generate the electricity so reservoir are also important they are also helpful to generate the electricity we get the electric current from the reservoir also it is another one use of the reservoir here and another one use here so sometimes when the flood occurs sometimes when the flood occurs if there is a no dams are present if there is a no dams are present large amount of the cultivated land will be destroyed due to the flood but if the dams are present they are going to avoid the flood which comes from the river therefore it is under one use of the reservoir here but we can't generate the electricity from the pond water we can't use the pond water for the irrigation system isn't it so that's are another two differences between ponds and reservoir see next it is uses of the ponds and reservoirs so as we know already ponds are the water which is present in the ponds it is used for the drinking bathing and uh, uh, daily uses of the man human beings and also for the animals for animal drinking for animal washing and also uh, washing our utensils we are going to use the pond water and also pond water it is used for fishery to cultivate the fishes that we are going to use pond water we are going to cultivate fishes in rivers also and also in reservoirs also but normally we are going to cultivate the fishes in the ponds that is another one use of the pond here and what are the uses of the reservoirs reservoirs are used for transportation also you have to remember some of the rivers which are present in our india that are used for the transportation for example roads are used for the transportation why because we are we are moving we are go with the bus on the roads like that we are going to use the rivers to go from one place to another place in the boats in the boats are the axes yaches we are going to use the rivers to go from one one place to another place so it is another one use of the rivers here or the reservoirs here see what are the uses of the reservoirs we can generate the electricity in the reservoirs and the reservoirs helps to avoid the flooding 
and reservoirs are helps to provide the water for irrigation system and also reservoirs provides the water throughout the year to the to drinking bathing and human usages see these are all the uses of the reservoirs here and now i am discussing so we know what is water and what are, what are the uses of the water then what are the properties of the water what are the properties here so i am going to discuss here i'm now i am start and one activity i am going to tell one activity we have to do here take a tumbler take a tumbler place it on a land place it on a land now you have to you have to take that tumbler with your one hand only you have to take that tumbler with one hand only now put that tumbler into the land and take some amount of water about 10 to 20 liter of water take 20 liter of water and pour to that tumbler and now you have to try to take that tumbler with only one hand is it possible to take that one uh, that tumbler with the one hand no why because it has somewhat weight isn't it but before the tumbler when the water is not present it is very easy because the tumbler is not doesn't has so much weight but when you are going to pour 20 liters of water it has a somewhat weight so what says here this activity says water has the weight this is the first property here water has the weight from this activity we are going to confirm that water has a somewhat weight and second second property of the water water flows from high region to the lower region so now you have to pour a water on a stair you have to pour a water on a stair you have to clearly observe the water always flows downwards towards the stair but water doesn't flows upward towards the stair why because it is under one property here the water flows from always it flows from higher reason to a lower reason water always flows from higher reason to the lower reason but it doesn't flows from lower reason to the higher reason it is under one property of the water now you have to take the water which is present in the tumbler and put that water into a bottle you are drinking water bottle you have to pour that water into water drinking bottle next you have to take same water pour that water into a glass you have to clearly observe when you are going to make this activity first you have to take the water from the tumbler and you have to pour that water into a water bottle next you have to observe then that take that water and pour that water bottle into a glass see the structure of the water here when you are going to put the water into the tumbler the water will be structured as the structure is present of the tumbler is it occupies the structure of the tum tumbler when you are going to pour that water into the bottle then in that case also the water occupies the shape of the bottle it has the structure it occupies the structure of the bottle when you are going to pour that water which is present in the bottle into the glass then also in that case the water occupies shape of the glass so what says here what activity tells here water doesn't has a definite shape the water doesn't has a definite shape but it occupies the shape of the container when you are going to put the water in any container it occupies the shape of that container so water doesn't has any shape here it doesn't has any shape it occupies the shape of the container which you are going to put it is under one property of the water here and now take about 10 ml of water in a small tumbler and now you have to start to give the heat to it or you have to boil it what happens after 5 to 10 minutes water will be starts to boil and wait until the water will be completely boiled what happens here the water which is present in the tumbler due to after boiling it will be get evaporated the water will be get evaporated so it is under one property here water evaporates when we get when we boil so water it will be evaporated evaporated means it it transfers the from liquid state to gaseous states it converts from liquid state to gaseous state due to the 
due to the presence of the heat so that water when boils it converts to vapor it is under one property of the water here these are the main important properties of the water which we are going to discuss in your lesson next another under one thing i am going to discuss here the water it is the most important material which is helpful for the living as i told it is the most important material for the living organisms that's why our ancestors are going to they are going to uh, use they are going to give the more importance for the water so now this water will be polluted due to the human activities what is water pollution so it is polluted polluted means it, so the water will be the the bad materials will be added to the water the bad materials are nothing but the waste materials like for the example the factories the waste materials which are present in the factories are removed to the rivers so due to the removal of the waste materials waste chemicals the water which is present in the river get polluted so what is water pollution here the unwanted the unwanted har harmful materials when mixed with the water then we are going to say the water will be polluted or the process of mixing up of unwanted materials into the water it is known as water pollution so what are the reasons for the water pollution here so reasons are the factories that are going to remove the waste products or the waste chemicals which are present in the factories they are going to remove that waste products into the water or into the rivers that causes the water pollution and second one here the man, man human beings are going to dispose human beings are going to dispose a dead things that animal things are dead bodies of the humans into the water that also causes water pollution and usage of more chemical fertilizers to the fields usage of the more chemical fertilizers when the chemical fertilizers are used when the rainfall comes the all the chemicals which are present on the earth surface are carried by the rain water and that rain water again will be get collected to the rivers therefore again the water pollution will be happened here so under one reason here the for the water pollution it is nothing but more use of the chemical fertilizer and under one is the washing of animals in the ponds and the rivers that also causes the water pollution here and under one thing is the gutters or the drainages are connected to the rivers the drainages are connected to the rivers that also causes the water pollution here because the drainages always has the waste water here when that waste water will be mixed up with the pure water which is present in the river that get, can be get polluted due to the gutter water or the or the sea uh, drainage water so what are the effects of the air pollution if the air pollution happens what are the effects so what water pollution causes diarrhea cholera such type of the diseases will be occurs in the human beings what happens when the water will be polluted here in that some of the microorganisms are developed the harmful microorganisms are developed in the polluted water that microorganism causes some of the diseases like diarrhea cholera that affects due to the water pollution and also that uh, polluted water drinking of that polluted water causes lots of the diseases in human beings and also animals and due to the water pollution the organisms the living organisms which are present in the water like fishes are going to be dead so that also under one harmful activity due to the water pollution here so we have to conserve the water why because the drinking water or a usable water or a consumable water is only present about 3% in on the earth surface so we have to conserve the water from the water pollution so what are the prevention methods we are going to take here to control the water pollution that is nothing but we have to save the water we have to use the water which amount is required that only and the waste water that will be recycled for reuse we have to recycle waste water for the reuse and under one prevention step we have to prevent the we have to prevent removal of fat, factory waste to the rivers we have to 
prevent here we we can adjust any materials or any machines at the drainages which the waste come from the factories towards the rivers that can purify the what the drainage water and that can be control the water pollution here and also we can prevent the water pollution by rejecting or by controlling by controlling washing of animals into the rivers or the ponds so these are the some important prevention methods which we are going to use which we are going to control the water pollution here so the water it is the most important liquid for the human beings to live on the earth surface without the food we can live for 2 to 3 days or a for a week but without the water we can't live even 2 to 3 days so it is a most important liquid which is present on the earth surface that's why it is called it as a life liquid so this is all about your another one most important chapter that is nothing but the water this completes your most important chapter water in the next session i am going to continue